this I think is my favourite story uh, of the new year so far bar none honestly bar none uh, rare film has been unearthed of a forgotten groundbreaking bit of transport that was built in the fens the 35 millimeter film material shows the testing of the hover train between Erith and Sutton during the 1970s I'm so pleased to say that uh, Drew Berry joins us this afternoon uh, afternoon Drew thank you very much for coming on the show you're still good afternoon happy new year happy new year to yourself so what is your link to the hover train uh, I'm in a very privileged position um, to have a, a substantial collection of 35 millimeter film um, that has been passed from sort of various people related to the the hover train project, uh, but ultimately making its way to uh, Brian Pierce of uh, Railroad Wildlife Haven, who has entrusted it to me uh, with the view of uh, doing something with it. So, how much of this stuff have you actually got? Uh, hours. Um, visually, we've estimated about four, maybe four and a half hours of film here, which has largely not been seen for about 50 years. Wowzers. And for people who don't know about the hover train, uh, they may have passed it, I think, on the A1M. Just describe it to us and why it was so groundbreaking at the time. Absolutely. Um, I mean, even back then, I think it was uh, something sort of reminiscent of a, a Jerry Anderson uh, kind of series, maybe Thunderbirds perhaps, but. Uh, it was this strange sort of futuristic technology um, that was supposed to enable us to travel uh, extremely high speeds over land. Um, they were aiming for about 300 miles per hour. And uh, it was all based on Professor Eric Leifwaite's um, sort of research to do with maglev, um, magnetic uh, levitation. So it was a train that effectively hovered on a bed of air. This is not a uh, a new thing because people may have heard of the virgin hyperloop and also one that i think's been put in together um, by mm. elon musk over in america and they're using almost the same technology but instead of it floating above rails where you can see the train they're doing it in a vacuum so it could be much quicker but this could have revolutionized transport not just in the uk absolutely i mean the the technology did revolutionize uh, transport except not in this country. Um, it's, uh, it's technology that's ultimately used in uh, Japan today. Um, it's a great shame that uh, we weren't able to sort of take it forward and realise its full potential ourselves. Is that the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train that goes from Tokyo to Fukushima and all those places? I believe so. Yeah, um, it's, it's a glorious looking thing and very, very quiet um, when they do the maglev trains. And um, all, all the stuff that you've got, what is it actually show well we've had uh, one of the what they call a combined print um, we've had one of those digitized it's the first part in a two two part print um, and it is wonderful stuff uh, what, what is on there basically shows the lead up to testing so the the making of the concrete track uh, over at uh, Tallington um, it shows scenes at um, because in Swindon, they actually built the hover train itself. Um, we see a little bit of uh, Ditton Walk in Cambridge, where the uh, head office was, and they had a, a short test track there as well with uh, RTV 41, which was a, a smaller um, sort of model that they were, they were using to do tests on. And uh, it takes us to the fans as well. So we see scenes between Erith and Sutton, uh, where all of this came together. And why do you actually want to digitise it? I think it's incredibly important that we preserve this um, for those that worked on the project, because uh, they were incredibly disheartened when um, ultimately the, the government withdrew its financial backing, uh, which is the, the reason that the project folded. Um, it is so often reported that the project was a flop, which isn't strictly true. The the first test, uh, the first phase of testing, was a resounding success. Uh, it's just because the financial backing was withdrawn, it it then failed. But, Why was the um, the backing withdrawn? Do you know? Oh, incredibly expensive. Uh, it was uh, at the time, uh, you know, multiple millions of pounds, but. Um, as with so much these days, um, politics played a part in it, I'm sure. 
Well, I suppose, uh, yeah, they're not looking at HS2 at the moment uh, with its costs, <laughs> uh, he says, rather naughtily uh, on air. So um, it's very important to preserve this film for future generations, but it's not cheap. And uh, you've got a fundraising campaign going at the moment. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, yes, we do. Um, so we're raising funds through GoFundMe. Um, so you can you can find the project online uh, by simply searching Ben and Don Film, uh, RTV31 Hover Train, and uh, we'll we'll come up sort of quite readily. Um, we, I mean, Ben and Don Film, we would absolutely love to make a, a documentary about the Hover Train to to tell the the complete story uh, from its conception with Professor Eric Leifwait through to its development with Tracked Hovercraft Limited. Um, right through to its abandonment and uh, ultimate salvation by Railworld Wildlife Haven. So um, we've, we've got the material to do it. And just remind me, I've, we've passed the hover train so many times, but I now can't remember which road uh, you drive by to go and see it. Is it the A1M or is it a, another road that you can go and sort of pass well, by Railworld? I'm the wrong person. I'm not local to Peterborough, I'm afraid. Um, Brian Pierce would be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get Brian from Railworld on. At some um, point. It, it's visible from uh, from the, um, the railway, though. I know that much. Yeah. Um, Drew, it's been fascinating to chat to you this afternoon. Thank you so much um, for coming on and talking about the film. And where can people find out more information just once more for? Us. Uh, well, if anyone would like to know more about the project, um, please do visit fenlandonfilm.co.uk. Um, the film that we've just recently had transferred is available on YouTube as well. So uh, if you'd like to see 18 minutes of 1970s gold, it's uh, it's there to be found. And I suppose, uh, is, is there any sort of little little keepsakes if people do donate to the project? Do you get like a, a, a model of the hover train or something like that or a signed print? It's something we can think about. Um, <laughs> okay. we're, we're, we're giving early access uh, to anyone that uh, backs the project. Sounds superb. Um, Drew, happy new year. Thank you very much for coming on the show this afternoon. Not at all. Thank you for having us. Uh, that's Drew Berry, uh, who is fundraising to digitise the film of the Fenland hover train. Uh, got loads and loads of uh, 35 mil film uh, of the hover train between Irith and Sutton, also in its development as well, that they're trying to make into a film, into a documentary. Uh, if you'd like to find out more, just stick uh, Fenland hover train uh, into your internet search engine and you'll be able to find out more.